Hey everyone, James Reeves with TFB TV and welcome to the top five best double stack concealed carry guns or something like that. The title's got to be catchier than that. I haven't thought of it yet, but I will. Anyways, this is a project I've been working on for a long time and those of you who are familiar with TFB TV may have seen a video that I came out with several years ago that I called like the top five scientifically proven best concealed carry guns, something to that effect. And again, jocular title, but it's something I'm passionate about and it's something that I've worked on for a long time. This has been kind of years in the making and I'm still working on it, but I'm trying to determine what guns are the most efficient for concealed carry in terms of size and weight to power and capacity. Eventually we're gonna expand the list, but right now we're doing just nine millimeters and 380s, at least for the foreseeable future. If I can get you guys to help, maybe we can expand it. And speaking of help, I wouldn't be able to do this if it weren't for your support on Patreon and Subscribestar. You guys helping us out at patreon.com slash tfbtv, subscribestar.com slash tfbtv. That goes to pay all of our expenses, all of the TFB TV personalities for the content they make, and it allows us to do what I think is pretty cool stuff like this. I've spent a couple years cataloging and verifying data as it relates to compact concealed handguns, and I wanna share that information with you. The information's not complete. For double stacks, we only have 82 compact double stack handguns, and as you're about to find out, not all of them are actually compact, whatever that means, but we'll get to that in just a second. So the first video I did a few years ago was kind of like the alpha. All we did in that video was take manufacturer's specifications. And we accepted them as true, we put them into a spreadsheet, and then I spat out a score. And I said, look, this is the efficiency score, and these are the most efficient guns using the manufacturer's specs. Here, this is like the beta. We've had firearm blog authors, we've had people from the Discord, we've had viewers, we've had people pitch in and actually go out and gather data, gather manufacturer data, and gather data from guns that they personally own. So you're going to see in our spreadsheet that I've shared, if you go down to the description, there will be a Google spreadsheet. If the rows are highlighted in yellow, that means that either a viewer or one of our chat room members, a patron, subscribe star supporter, or even a firearm blog author or personality has actually gone and verified those measurements themselves, and we take their word for it. So again, the goal is to figure out what guns are the most efficient by size and by weight. And we're going to talk about that, but first, before we get there, how do you even get on the list? You've got to be a compact handgun. We're only going to do compact handguns. The main reason for that is a way to hack this list is to make your handgun have a bigger butt, like J-Lo. The bigger the butt, the more efficient the gun's going to be. Take, for example, the Glock 45, which is essentially the Glock 19X. That is a Glock that has a full-size frame, but a compact slide. A gun like the Glock 19X or the Glock 45 is like the ultimate cheat, because all you have to do is add like probably not even an ounce of polymer to the bottom of the gun. You're keeping the top of the gun compact. But when you make the frame a full size, you're just adding a little bit of polymer and you get an extra two rounds of capacity. So that's going to make your efficiency numbers. That's gonna make the gun more efficient. There are a total of four guns in the top seven that are all larger than 5.1 inches and they've got very high total efficiency scores. Three in particular would be the Glock 45, as I've discussed, the Sig Sauer P320 carry and the FN FNS9. All of these guns are five and a half inches tall, substantially taller than a Glock 19. And they all hold 17 rounds, but each of them only weigh about an ounce or an ounce and a half more than the Glock 19. So it makes them much more efficient. So we had to establish a cutoff and we had to say, look, at this point, the gun's no longer compact and it can't be considered in the rankings because otherwise you would just have a bunch of full size guns. And the problem with that, what's going to print is gonna be this part up here, the butt, if you're carrying muzzle down under your clothes. So we wanna keep them compact. We wanna keep things fair. We don't want guns like compact guns with full size frames hacking the rankings. So what did we do? We turned to the viewers. We asked you guys, hey, look, what do you think? What makes a gun compact? When is a pistol no longer compact? If a gun is taller than X inches, it's no longer a compact handgun. As I sit here today, there are almost 400 responses from viewers. So in the poll, 40% of you said 5.1 inches was the cutoff. 
That includes the Glock 19, the P320X Compact, the CZ75 Compact, all in that 5 to 5.1 inch size group. In total, 80% of you thought that a gun had to be 5.1 inches or smaller in order to be a true compact handgun. Accordingly, there's a consensus. The cutoff is 5.1 inches. And while I have guns on the spreadsheet just for your personal edification that are taller than 5.1 inches, they're disqualified from the rankings because truly at that point, they kind of become full size or service handguns and no longer compact handguns. Now, when we did weight, there was no consensus. A third of you said that weight wasn't a factor in compactness. A third of you said that it's gotta be the same weight as a Glock 19 or lighter, that is 24 ounces or less. And a third of you said that guns that are 25 to 33 ounces are still considered compact handguns. So there was no consensus for weight and we haven't excluded any results based on weight. Let's talk about the sheet. You and I can personally look at the data together. Here you've got brand and model. That should be pretty self-explanatory. If it is not, don't go any further because I swear to God your head's gonna explode when we look at the rest of this sheet. Stack. Is it a single stack or a double stack? Today we're talking only about double stack, and that is, for those of you who don't know, magazines that have a staggered configuration of ammunition inside the magazine. Now we get to width. This is perhaps one of the most important, but also one of the most troublesome measurements. As an example, the Sig P365 and 365 XL, the slide of that gun, and where the slide meets the frame, the polymer component, that's only 0.9 inches thick. But the grip, the vast majority of the grip, is about 1.1 inches thick. So where do you take the measurement? A lot of this is really a judgment call, especially if we've taken our own measurements. Like, hey, look, are we going to measure it at the slide? Are we going to measure it at the frame? Are we going to measure it at the grip? And in many instances, we just take whatever the manufacturer's measurement is. But we struggled with that one, and I hate it because it's such an important factor. Fortunately, many of these are very close in terms of width, so we're just going with what we got. We're doing the best we can. Height, self-explanatory. How tall is the gun if you're looking at it from behind? Footprint, this is the area of the gun, the square inchage of the gun, if you will. That is height times width. Those are the only two factors that I considered in efficiency. A lot of people say, James, why didn't you look at length? Why didn't you do volume? because that can be deceiving. You're going to be able to conceal a gun that's got an inch longer barrel much easier than a gun that's got an inch longer grip. So we wanted to make sure that the emphasis was on the grip. Not to mention you have ancillary benefits from having a longer slide. You have better ballistic performance. You've got a longer sight radius. And those guns are also penalized as is. At least if you consider weight, they're going to be heavier than their counterparts that aren't as long. So in a way, they're also going to be docked points for efficiency. But at the end of the day, length is the least important factor. And for that matter, I don't wanna penalize guns for the dimension that not only is easier to conceal, but makes the pistol a better pistol anyways. Capacity with a flush fit magazine. How many rounds does the gun hold in a magazine that fits flush with the bottom of the grip? The weight of the gun empty with an empty magazine. Now again, we haven't verified all these numbers and I know for sure that a lot of these numbers aren't accurate. For example, the kel P11 on their website says that it weighs 14 ounces, but even with the magazine out, it does not weigh 14 ounces. It's like 14 and change. Then when you throw an empty magazine in there, the kel balloons up to 16.93 ounces. This is a measurement that I took myself. So that's almost a full three ounces. I mean, dude, that's like 20% heavier. So that's gonna make the efficiency score go down, whereas on paper, the kel P11 was like in the top five. Weight loaded, that's simple. You just take the empty weight plus how many ounces of ammo it'll have when it's fully loaded. Rounds per square inch is a measurement of efficiency by area. So how tall is this gun? How wide is this gun? How many rounds does it hold? So if you have a higher number here, the more rounds per square inch, the better. You can see some of these guns even approach three rounds per square inch. That's like you have a five inch tall gun that's only one inch thick and holds 15 rounds. You're looking at three rounds per square inch. That's pretty good. Rounds per ounce, pretty self-explanatory. How many rounds of capacity do you get in this gun per ounce of weight? Finally, we've got the total efficiency score. Now, if you don't care about weight, then you can just use the rounds per square inch and be done with it. You can use that as your score. But if you do care about weight, like me, 
what we've done is we've multiplied the rounds per square inch times rounds per ounce and we've come out with an aggregate total efficiency score and that's how we're ranking the guns. Now that I've talked your fucking ear off about the history of this spreadsheet and how we came up with these results, which I think is a very important explanation, let's look at the most efficient double stack compact handguns. Starting with number five, the MNP9 Compact 2.0 with the 3.6 inch barrel versus the four inch barrel, of course, that's gonna make this gun more efficient because you're talking bigger butt but lighter weight because you have the exchange of the 0.4 inch, 10% shorter slide. It's got kind of a chunky width of 1.2 inches, but it's about a 10th of an inch shorter than the Glock 19. It holds 15 rounds, kind of hefty at 25.9 ounces, but it's got decent scores of 2.5 rounds per square inch and 0.47 rounds per ounce, giving it a total efficiency score of 1.18 not bad. We now go to our number four, the Mossberg MC2C. Ivan, aka Kit Badger, went out and reviewed this gun for us. He had a very favorable impression of it. I think it is a really solid contender with respect to concealed carry pistol. Really nice, comfortable pistol in the hand. But as you can see here, extremely lightweight at only 21 ounces. It's got a capacity of 13 and a height of only 4.9 inches. So it's 0.2 inches smaller than a Glock 19. It's about three ounces lighter than a Glock 19. So it has a great score of 2.41 rounds per square inch. You get half a round of capacity exactly per ounce. And it's got a total efficiency score of 1.2. So anything beyond 1.2, any number of total efficiency higher than 1.2 is gonna be really good. We now move to a very suitable and fitting number three the Glock 19, the Gen 3 and the Gen 4. The guns are 1.26 inches wide, but they are in fact narrower at many places. I think that a Glock 19 is about one inch thick at the slide. 5.04 inches tall with a capacity of 15 rounds, only 23.63 ounces empty, which gives them a good score of 2.36 rounds per square inch and 0.51 rounds per ounce, a total score of 1.2. So the Glock 19 kind of sets the red line at 1.2. Everyone thinks of that as kind of the flagship perennial compact handgun. So if it's got a total aggregate score lower than 1.2, it's not as efficient as a Glock 19, but if it's higher, it's more efficient than the Glock 19. And there are only three guns, give or take, that are more efficient than a Glock 19 on this list. The Springfield Armory Hellcat. I favorably reviewed this gun. I was very impressed with it. I verified the measurements myself. It is only one inch thick. It's only four inches tall. It therefore has a footprint of four inches but it has a capacity of 11 rounds in its standard configuration and an empty weight of just 18.2 ounces. That's like single stack gun weight. It's got a very high score of 2.75 rounds per square inch of area. They crammed a lot of rounds into a very small magazine and 0.49 rounds per ounce, leading to a total score of 1.34. Now, some of you may consider this the number two. Some of you may consider this the number one. It really just depends how you look at what the true number one is, but we'll get there. The RX Rex Delta. I could have guessed if you would have held an RX Rex Delta to my head, well, that would have been quite a hint, but if you had just held some other gun to my head, I would have guessed that the Delta would have been one of the most efficient guns on this list. Why? Because it shares a similar footprint to the Glock 19, but it's slimmer, it's lighter, and it has the same capacity. It's also got a great trigger. 1.18 inches thick, five inches tall, both of those dimensions smaller than the Glock 19, but it's got the 15 round capacity of the Glock 19. It's got an empty weight of just 22.2 ounces, so a little bit slimmer than the Glock 19, with a great score of 2.54 rounds per square inch, very efficient, and 0.53 rounds per ounce, leading to a total efficiency score of 1.35. Now, normally, the RX Rex Delta would be considered the most efficient gun on this list. But we've got kind of a hack, got a little gun nerd life hack here for the true number one. And that is the Glock 43X. Ah, ah, but you're saying, James, the Glock 43X is a single stack. Yes, it is. However, you guys know Shield Arms. They made the Glock 43X 15 round double stack magazine by essentially removing the polymer shell outside of the Glock 43X magazine, making it an all metal magazine 
thereby increasing the capacity by a whopping 50%. The Glock 43X with 15 round shield mags is essentially a single stack gun that accepts double stack magazines and it therefore blows every single one of these guns out of the water. In fact, even the admirable Rex Delta doesn't even come close to total score. At 1.1 inches thick, it's like 10 to 20% thinner than most of the guns on this list. It's only 5.04 inches tall, giving it a total footprint of just 5.54 inches, but with a capacity of 15 rounds and an empty weight of 18.7 ounces, which is just half an ounce heavier than the Hellcat that holds four fewer rounds, you're looking at a score of 2.71 rounds per square inch, which believe it or not, the Hellcat actually has a beat on that spec, but 0.66 rounds per ounce where it smokes the Hellcat giving it a total efficiency score of 1.79. The Glock 43X Xing out the competition, the next best scoring gun being the Rex Delta with a 1.35 total. So the Glock 43X absolutely crushed it. So guys, there you have it. Those are the most efficient concealed carry guns. Feel free to peruse the list, sort it uh, by whatever score that you want there, and feel free to contribute. Take your own measurements, send me photos, I mean of the guns, just send me photos of the guns with nothing else other than the guns and the measurements for the guns. And I'll add them to the sheet and I'll even maybe add a credit column where I give you credit for the specs that you send me. Again, guys, this is something I'm really passionate about. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it wasn't too boring or too nerdy. Stay tuned, we're gonna bring you single stack nine millimeters and then eventually we're gonna bring you 380s. I wanna give a quick thank you to everyone who contributed, gun scientists from Discord, and the other viewers who helped make this list. I'm gonna go ahead and flash their names on the screen now as a way of saying thank you, even though I owe them much more than that. But thank you as usual for watching and thank you to our sponsors, Blue Alpha Gear. They make the best gun belts you can buy. Ventura Munitions, whenever they get ammo back in stock when this coronavirus thing blows over. And finally, Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore. Guys, thanks again for watching. See you in a few.